Hello there, my name is Ismaus and uh, welcome to another Blender tutorial. So yesterday I produced uh, this video here just showing you how to simulate uh, bullets falling to the ground and I got uh, this comment uh, from Alien Soup asking whether something like this was possible. So here we are, I did some experimenting and uh, I tried uh, to see if that was possible because I also wondering the same thing. Uh, you can read through the comment on this on this video here, bullet shells in Blender and uh, you will see his question and uh, my reply uh, so that you can follow up uh, with, uh, with what I did here. So the full time lapse of the process of making this here because this is just going to be a walkthrough of what I did here but uh, the, the entire steps uh, that I did to get out of this part uh, you can watch on my second channel Blender Money. I can see I've just uploaded the video here. So go and watch that if you want to see all the steps I did uh, to get where I am because this is just going to be a quick run through. So let's get started and uh, look at what I did here. So uh, there are two things here I, I'm doing here. So I'm using three major th systems. So I'm using the array system uh, to feed in these bullets here and then using two particle systems and just hide these bullets and uh, also hide these shells. You can see if you look at uh, this gun, let me hide it for a second. We have these emitters. Uh, basically what they're doing, they're just, this one is emitting the bullets to kind of create that illusion that uh, as these bullets are getting pushed in, are uh, kind of getting into the gun, uh, they're being pushed out uh, like how you'd see a gun react. So, and then they are pushed out into this. And uh, then if I get this, then the shells are emitted separately. Let me first hide that, hide this. So basically what we have are this emitter shoots uh, the bullets. It's just uh, creating a, a simple particle emitter uh, with a normal velocity, a very high normal velocity. And uh, I'm also making sure that uh, I'm emitting the same number of bullets uh, that I have in my array. Uh, if you can see, maybe not exactly, but something close to it. So that's what I'm shooting out in this emitter. But uh, you can see I'm killing the bullet or the, the lifespan of uh, these particles is very short. So about two frames so that so that the bullet so that those bullets die before uh, they go out of the barrel because out of the barrel I only want to see uh, the the actual bullet pe that penetrates uh, this here and then the shell should be kind of thrown off on this side thrown out of the gun so then I then I have this second emitter just the same this, with the same settings except uh, the difference is that uh, in the render settings of uh, the particle settings, I'm rendering out uh, this, let me bring up the extras, you can see the three props we're using here. I'm rendering out uh, this and then with the first emitter that we have here, I'm rendering out this and uh, then for this array though I did that, let me just maybe do it for you here, As, let me duplicate this. So basically what I did is I used the array system. Just rotate this 90 de degrees like this. Again, make sure you use uh, the same number of bullets or at least close uh, to what uh, you're pushing out here. You're shooting out, something like that. And uh, what I did is I parented this. I, I used the curve modifier. Let me just add that. Is that I use the curve modifier just to bend uh, the these bullets. So if I add a curve modifier to this, I select that curve. You just need to pick the right axis. And there now I can deform this bullet, this bullet belt in any way I want. Now, when it comes to, you, you see, the, uh, the bullets disappear when they get into the gun, like that. Uh, the way I did that 
I just animated uh, the bullets moving forward uh, in the uh, X or Y direction like that. So you can see, I just increase the speed here. Something like that. And uh, also went into the array and just animated the count. Just go to the last frame. Animated the count basically to reduce it down at the same rate as uh, the movement of the bullet. Basically, that's why. So you just have to make sure you get uh, the timing right so that it's not too fast and not too slow until you get something that uh, looks a bit confu conv convincing. And uh, you can see in my gun here, as the gun moves or rotates, uh, this curve also, the, the belt, the bullet belt also kind of uh, shakes as well. So for that, I made it very simple. I just went into the curve editor, uh, into the curve and uh, added a hook, control H, add a hook. And uh, basically what I did, I, I parented uh, this hook because when you have a hook uh, connected to your curve editor, just exactly what we do, we have just done, uh, you can move or deform uh, the curve by just moving uh, the hook you have just added. Now, if you parent this uh, to another object, then when you are, when this moves, uh, the entire build moves. And uh, because I have some animation added to this gun, it kind of vibrates as uh, the build also vibrates. Very, very simple tricks. And then for the hardest part, not the hardest part, but uh, maybe the hardest part to think about, uh, where the main ex thinking had to go in uh, was uh, creating this rigid body physics that we are being emitted out. Because if I hide uh, the bullets, sorry, most of the extra elements we have in our scene, this can see it's like uh, the bullets are being Im emitted from somewhere but uh, they're actually not because uh, the particle system in in blender unfortunately does not uh, emit rigid bodies so you can't uh, create rigid bodies directly from uh, from particles so the way I did that the way I did it is that uh, I just got where are my props I just got the bullet I wanted to use uh, I got the shell that I wanted to use, so I'll just get the shell. And uh, uh, because you can see from here, each bullet has an initial uh, angular velocity, ang angular momentum. So it kind of rotates as it's being pushed out or being emitted. Uh, they're not really being emitted, but I'm just trying to explain here. <clears throat> and uh, so to achieve that, what I did, I used the rigid body system, but uh, I animated uh, the first few frames. So let me first actually remove the rigid body system. Let's push this. I give it a slight rotation. Let's see, we have something like that. And uh, at around frame maybe two, or in the middle of these keyframes, you can turn on the rigid body system and turn on animated. Make sure you mark a keyframe and then just move one frame up from that and uh, remove the, the animated property. Uh, this will use uh, the initial velocity, uh, including the angular momentum and everything, uh, to drive uh, the physics of the bullet. And you can see now it drops. And uh, if I add another rigid body here to collide uh, with this, uh, where is this? To collide with this. give this a rigid body system type passive you can see it will collide with that object so and uh, that's how I managed uh, to get that projection th those projectiles and uh, because and then I parented uh, those bullets uh, that bullet you can say if I parent uh, this bullet to this it will get uh, that initial mo motion of 
of this uh, gun. So whenever the bullet, the gun rotates, that bullet will also pick up uh, that rotation and uh, kind of vary, create a variation of those projectiles. So let me show you how I made it. I was able to emit a, a number of, produce a number of bullets every second. So for that, what I did, I just, if I first go to the frame, I just duplicated this bullet a few times. So shift D without moving uh, the keyframe. So, I, so make sure you switch off the record button, shift D, duplicate it a few times. And uh, just to make sure that uh, it was easy for me to select the bullets, I moved them into a new collection. Every copy I did, I moved into a different collection. So you can duplicate uh, those bullets as many times as you want, making sure that uh, you have the same number of bullets as your chain. And now when you play back, they all get the same physics, uh, but uh, because they have the same animation keyframes, uh, you will get the kind of just jump explode uh, since they are intersecting. But uh, if you start offsetting these bullets, so let me show you, let me expand this. Let me just select all the bullets. If I expand them, sorry, if I, if you start offsetting uh, the keyframes for each bullet, so let me just select bullet one and bullet two. Uh, you can see the keyframes here. Let me just also collapse this so that we can easily see. I just want these two. So that we can easily see that uh, this is bullet one, this is bullet two. Now, if you offset these keyframes, you can determine when uh, wh when you want uh, the other bullets to be shot. So I, I I'll just come in here and start offsetting bullet per bullet. I wish there was a way to offset a number of, to just select everything and, and offset them directly. So, but uh, basically this is what I did. And uh, this should, this should mean that uh, each bullet is activated at a different uh, time. So now you can see that uh, you get that effect and uh, they all get uh, their physics as you expect them. And basically that is what I did. So let me show you uh, on the original version here. If I select all, I think uh, in this, so select objects, I can see how I offset all those bullets. And, uh, but uh, the original position uh, is uh, the same. And uh, to make sure that I have control over where those bullets are, uh, you will see that uh, if you watch the time lapse, uh, you will see that uh, sometimes I needed to move uh, these bullets uh, to kind of have artistic uh, positioning of, uh, just to have control over where I want to position those bullets. So if I had, if say the original position was kind of intersecting uh, with the gun, what I did, I selected all the bullets. I make sure you, it would be easy if you have all, all of those bullets in a collection so that you can easily select them. I, I just parented them onto, onto this empty uh, so that I can easily move and rotate if I wanted a different angle or projection. You can see, I can basically just put this so it's like a simple uh my own emitter uh, you don't where i don't even have to rely on the particle emitter uh, that Brianna, blender that creates and i'm emitting my own uh particle rigid body particles now they can also collide uh, with this object or whatever this case here yeah so that's how I did everything. Uh, but uh, if you want to watch the entire time lapse, just go to this and uh, watch uh, the other things that I did there. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.